uh, in uh, spirituality, there's some terms that are used for enlightenment, like um, nirvana, um, which means cessation. Dunyata, which is a, a Sanskrit term that means something like the void, a term that's often used in Buddhism is um, you know, the quality of emptiness. So all these all these terms are, you know, have have a very sort of negative connotation, um, and it's intentional. Um, I think part of the intention is to um, weed out some, you know, curiosity seekers, people that are just, you know, just dabbling. Um, but the other probably more significant purpose is that it removes the um, goal orientation of um, some hoped for future state that we're going from here to there. Um, it's a little harder to um, desire cessation <laughs> um, than it is to desire everlasting bliss, for example. So it's, it's just taking away the mind's tendency to want to grasp after the next thing. You know, before I wanted, you know, the bigger house, but now I'm a spiritual person and I want enlightenment, right? <laughs> it can still be the same movement. Why do, you, why, did, why do you want enlightenment? Because I'll feel better, right? So that can be um, a motivation initially, um, but at some point we realize that it's about more than just our individual desire to feel better. We find that out because as we go further along, um, it, there are times when it can feel quite challenging because in this journey to find out what we already are, anything um, that holds us in separation will be challenged. So this journey is not about accumulation of more and more positive experiences, you know, that I'll, I'll, I'll just get happier and happier and happier and one day I'll be so happy, I'll be enlightened. The confusing part is it can feel like that for a while. It can feel like, oh, this is really working. I'm getting more peaceful. I'm getting happier. And it, it can work like that for a while. But at some point, life asks more of us. You know, so it's asking for you know, parts of ourselves that we may not have been previously willing to look at. So these can be challenging. We don't have to seek out those challenging areas of our life. Life, life will, will show us. <laughs> it's good at that, you know. And it's not, what we're talking about here isn't at all about not enjoying um, the wonderful, uplifting, um, spiritually elevating experiences that we may have. I mean, those are to be enjoyed, you know, it's all part of life. Um, so, you know, it's not about denying um, that experience of joy and wonder. You know, that too. At the same time, not avoiding um, more challenging times. So it can be a little confusing if we've been going along thinking everything is working so well and, and I'm on my way. And then suddenly um, we hit a few speed bumps and we feel like something's gone terribly wrong. Um, and, and I'd suggest that th that's not the case at all. Life has um, its own wisdom uh, and each of our journeys will unfold in their own unique way. Yours won't be like anyone else's. And life seems to have this amazing ability to give us 
what we need when we need it, when we're able, might be a stretch, but when we're able to learn what needs to be learned next. And it seems like um, where we learn most is from the challenging times. You know, the times that um, you can look back on later, maybe years later and say, yeah, that, that, was, um, that was a tough lesson, but, and I'm, I'm glad I had a chance to learn it. Uh, I may not want to do it again, <laughs> that's okay, but I don't, I don't regret having gone through that. So that's sort of the, the feeling after the fact of, you know, some of these more challenging situations. So they're not to be, they're not to be denied. We can't, um, we can't reach what we truly are by denying any part of ourselves, by ignoring any part, by trying to bypass, go around any part because eventually we'll be called back to, to look at that too. This is not to say that we have to fix any of that before awakening. I'm just saying sooner or later, all of that will be called for uh, to be looked at. So it will take some degree of, well, actually a considerable degree, of um, you know willingness and um, effort, effort to reach the effortless, a certain amount of courage too. It's not the courage like you know one day you know you're just going to build up a head of steam and you know very willfully you know all at once um, try to give yourself over to the divine. It's more like the willingness to, again and again and again, look at whatever life's offering. It's not some willful conquering of something beyond us. It's really allowing the divine to be revealed through, through us. It's much more of a receptive thing than a, um, having to do with <laughs> conquering distant domains, right? <laughs>